Good evening all. Hearty welcome to yet another episode of Vijnana Vedi presented by Goodness TV. Hope you are all doing good, isn't it? And in your last classes, what were you dealing with? You just studied songs, poems, short stories, isn't it? Yes, and today we are going to deal with something different. Are you eager to know that? Yes, then just come along with me. Hello. Namaste. Sayonara. Arrivederci. You can either say good day, Kiora, what's up, what's going on, big up yourself, hey buddy, what's going on, or you say hi go, what's going on, what's going on, good day, hey, 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 hi, hello, 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 Zdravo. Zdravej. Sveiki. Shalom. Salam. 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 Aslam alaikum. Kamer joba. Konnichiwa. Merhaba. Marhaba. Mo. Moi. Cześć. Buna ziwa. Sawa dikha. Saubona. Yasu. Hello, Jambo or Habari? Habari. Hola. 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 Adios. Adios. Adio. Adam. Sejen. Paka. Paka. Tschüss. Hey do. Nachamdis. Alveda. Moi moi. Papa. Hoş çaka. Oreo kila. Khuda hafız. Allah hafız. Masalem. La gon. Tibi kata. Annyeong. Saobo. Ciao. 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 Nas kledano. Uzredzeşnos. Kedaiga. Kwa hevri. Dui. Dui jdeme. Ikyo. Mba. Tambe. Kambe. Selamat datang. Selamati. Salagahe. Tak. Pa. Au revoir. Bonsoir. See ya. All right, I see you. Goodbye. See you later. See you later. Catch you later. I see, see you later. 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 Bye. Bye bye. 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 Goodbye. Bye. Now, tell me, what have you seen here? You have seen many different people, isn't it? But do they look alike? No, they do differ, isn't it? Yes. So, what kind of differences can you notice in them? Of course, they do differ in color, skin, uh, dressing, appearance, language, etc. Isn't it? Yes, but why is that difference or why are they different? Yes, of course, they are different because they belong to different countries. Isn't it? Yes. And now, let me give you an imagination question. And the question is, just think about the Americans. You all know who are Americans. You have seen Americans, isn't it? And just tell me the important points which comes into your mind when you remember about Americans. Of course, they are white people then. Yes, their standard of living is very much high. They are educated. All these points comes into your mind, isn't it? Yes. And on the other hand, just make a imagination about the Africans. What all things comes into your mind when you think about these Africans? Yes, of course, they are dark people. Then we would say that their standard of living is not that high. They are not educated, isn't it? Yes, but are all Americans like this? Or are all Africans like that? Let us see. And here, we are going to learn a speech named as the danger of a single story. What is the title? The danger of a single story and it is written by the very famous Nigerian novelist Chimamanda Gyosi Adichie. Who is that? Chimamanda Gyosi Adichie. Now, let us see what Chimamanda Gyosi Adichie has to tell us through her speech. Ready? Then come. The danger of a single story. I am a storyteller and I would like to tell you a few personal stories about what I like to call the danger of a single story. I grew up on a university campus in eastern Nigeria. My mother says that I started reading at the age of 2, although I think it probably happened when I was 4. So, I was an early reader and what I read were British and American children's books. So, tell me, who is Chimamanda Gyosi Adichie? 
Yes, she is a story teller and her mother remembers that Adichi started reading at the age of 2. Is there anybody here who started reading at the age of 2? And Adichi, she was born in Eastern Nigeria and she was brought in the university campus of Eastern Nigeria. And we have seen that her mother remembers she reading at the age of 2 and she herself remembers she started reading at the age of 4 and mainly she just read the books of American and British literature or she read American and British children's books. Is it clear for you? Yes. Now, you are having a question from this paragraph. Just note down the question. And the question for you is, what kind of books did Adichie read? What kind of books did Adichie read? We have seen it right now. The answer is, I know that you know the answer. What is the answer? Adichie used to read American and British children's books. Clear, isn't it? Okay, now moving ahead. I was also an early writer and when I began to write at about the age of 7, stories in pencil with crayon illustrations that my poor mother was obligated to read, I wrote exactly the kinds of stories I was reading. All my characters were white and blue eyed, they played in the snow, they ate apples and they talked a lot about the weather, how lovely it was that the sun had come out. But I had never been outside Nigeria. We didn't have snow, we ate mangoes and we never talked about the weather because there was no need to. Yes, we have seen that Adichi is an early story reader, isn't it? Yes, she was also an early story writer and Adichi, she started to write at the age of 7 and it was her mother who was compelled to read her early stories and Adichi she just used pencils and crayons for writing and she just wrote exactly what she read. Which are the books she used to read? Yes, she used to read the story books of American and British literature, isn't it? So that was exactly what she wrote in her stories and just see this. She used to write about white colored people or white skinned people with blue eyes. Why? Because she just read the American and British stories and this was the character which she wrote in her stories. And the weather, weather over there was snowfall and people waiting for the sun. It was happy for them to see the rising of, of the sun. Why? Because it was heavy snowfall there and it was the climate of, of course America or British. Why this happened? Because she used to read the books of American and British literature. Not only that, she also wrote about the people who ate apples because she have read about the people who ate apples in the American and British literature. And what about her people or in which country she was born? Yes, she was born in Nigeria. And what about the people there? The people over there was black, isn't it? But she never included these people in her stories. The people there was black as well as they just ate oranges. And the weather there was dry, even rainy. But she never included these characters into her story. Why? What is the reason? Because she just exactly copied what she read in her or in her stories. Which types of stories she used to read? Yes, she used to read the books of American and British literature or children's books. It's clear for you, isn't it? Okay, and here you are having... A question, just note down the question. How does Adichi begin her speech? What is striking about it? How does Adichi begin her speech? What is striking about it? How did she begin the speech? Yes, Adichi introduces herself as a storyteller at the beginning of the 
speech that is clear isn't it now the second question for you from the paragraph is how does adichi describe the characters in her earlier writings how did she describe the characters and the answer is in her early writings all the characters were white and blue eyed they played in the snow they ate apple and talked a lot about the weather so i think this is clear for you isn't it okay now let's move into the next part okay come along with me what this shows i think is how impressionable and vulnerable we are in the face of a story particularly as children because all i had read were books in which characters were foreign i had become convinced that books by their very nature had to have foreigners in them and had to be about things with which i could not personally identify now things changed when i discovered african books there were in many of them available and they were in quite as easy to find as the foreign books but when i read shinu ashby and kemara lay i realized that people like me girls with the skin the color of chocolate whose kinky hair could not form ponytails could also exist in literature i started to write about things i recognized i loved the american and british books i read this shaped my imagination and opened up new worlds for me but african writers saved me from having a single story of what books are okay now we have seen that what kind of stories did this adichi wrote yes she used to write about the american and british people isn't it and she believed that only stories could be enjoyable and complete if these foreign characters are included in a story she thought that a foreign character or foreign characters is a necessary in the story and all the characters in her story was of these white people never ever people from her country that is africa or nigeria occurred to be in her stories but this thought of her changed when she happened to read the books of chinu ashbe and kemara lay who is chinu ashbe who is kemara lay chinu ashbe is a very famous nigerian novelist as well as kemara lay is a very famous african writer and both of them has just contributed immense of novels and stories to the world of literature and it has been influenced by the whole world every characters of their stories and novels were or are africans and nigerians means her own people then that was the moment she realized that even these people could be a part of story they also can be the characters in a story and that was the moment she started writing or making characters from nigeria or african in her stories she just started writing stories about this african or nigerian people it's clear for you isn't it okay now you have learned about profiles you know how to write a profile isn't it and here let me introduce you some profiles ready for that okay so just see this chinu ashby chinu ashby nigerian novelist poet professor and critic was born on 16th november 1930 his first novel things fall apart often considered as his masterpiece is a most widely read book in modern african literature he was honored with many different awards such as nigerian national order of merit award st louis literary award 1999 etc after contributing many notable works to the world of literature he died in the year 2013 at the age of 82 moving to the next profile kemara lay kemara lay is an african writer from guinea born in the year 1928 he is the author of the african child a novel based loosely on his own childhood and the radiance of the king both novels are among the earliest major works in francophone african literature after completing a long journey in literature he died in the year 1980 so hope profile writing is clear for you 
is not it. Now, we are all thorough with profile writing and you have understood the life of Kamara Lae and Srinivas Bay, is not it? Yes. And there is a new word for you from the earlier paragraph and just note down the word. The word is vulnerable. What is the meaning of vulnerable? Exposed to the possibility of being attacked or harmed. What is the meaning? Exposed to the possibility of being attacked or harmed. Now, what is the next section? Of course, comprehension, is not it? So, just join me for the comprehension question. Take down the question and the question for you is, how did Adichie feel when she read books authored by Ashby and Lay? How did Adichie feel when she read books authored by Ashby and Lay? We have seen this right now. What is the answer? She realized that people like her, girls with skin the color of chocolate and whose kinky hair could not form ponytails could also exist in literature. The answer is clear for you, is not it? Now, let us move ahead. Yes, so join along with me. I come from a conventional middle class Nigerian family. My father was a professor, my mother was an administrator and so we had, as was the no, live in domestic help who would often come from nearby rural villages. So, the year I turned 8, we got a new houseboy. His name was Fide. The only thing my mother told us about him was that his family was very poor. My mother sent yams and rice and our old clothes to his family. And when I didn't finish my dinner, my mother would say, finish your food, don't you know, people like Fide's family have nothing. So, I felt enormous pity for Fide's family. Now, let us see about Adichie's family. She just comes from a Nigerian middle class conventional family and her father is a professor, mother is an administrator. Since both her parents were working, according to the rules existed there, they had to keep a houseboy in their house or a servant. The rule existed there was that if both the parents were working and if they belong to the middle class family, of course, they should keep a houseboy or a servant in their house. And according to that, a houseboy or a servant named Fide came to their house when Adichie was 8 years old. How many years? 8 years old. And Fide just came, the family of Adichie and Fide, he just belonged to a very poor family. So, Adichi, she felt enormous pity or sympathy towards this Fide. And if Adichi waste or if she find any laziness in having food, her mother would advise Adichi saying that there are people around you who starves for food or who feels hungry. And hence, Adichi never wasted food because she had that pity or sympathy towards Fide and his family. Why? Because he just comes from a very poor family. We have seen that this Fide's family is very poor, is not it? And thus Adichi's mother, she used to send yams or rice or old clothes to Fide's family because they were that poor. And here is a question for you. Just note down the question. The question for you is, why did Adichie's mother used to send yams, rice and old clothes to Fide's family? Question is, why did Adichie's mother used to send yams, rice and old clothes to Fide's family? We have seen the answer right now, is not it? What is the answer? Adichie's mother used to send yams, rice and old clothes to Fide's family because he belonged to a poor family, is not it? Yes, that is it and that is all for today. Now, this is the time for the activity, just note down the activity and the activity for you today is a profile writing. You have seen how to write profiles in the earlier paragraph, is not it? Yes, so today you have to write a profile of Chimamanda Gyozi Adichie and the hints for you are born 15th September 1977 Nigeria, education 
Drexel University, University of Nigeria, Yale University, Works, Purple Hibiscus 2003, Half of a Yellow Sun 2006, Period 2003 to Present, Awards, Women's Prize for Fiction, National Book Critics Circle. Hope the hints are clear for you, isn't it? So just try writing the profile of Chimamanda Gyosi Adichie and just send it to your English teacher. This is all for today and let me wind up today's portion. What have we seen here? Yes, we have seen about a novelist Chimamanda Gyosi Adichie and her speech, isn't it? Yes, we have seen about the works which she read, which she wrote, isn't it? And we have seen about her family and the servant boy named Fide. Okay, that's it. And please do make the necessary revisions and clarifications. This class is available on the YouTube channel of Goodness TV. And if you have any corrections or clarifications, please do comment in the comment box below. That's all for today. Thank you. May God bless you and have a great night. Thank you.